Hi, in this video we're gonna talk about descriptive statistics and I'm gonna explain the four key components in a simple way. Let's say a company wants to know how its employees travel to work. And so the company creates a survey to answer this question. Once enough data is collected, this data can be analyzed using descriptive statistics. So what is descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics aims to describe and summarize your data in a meaningful way. It provides a simple overview of the main characteristics of your data. But it is important to note that descriptive statistics only describe the collected data, without drawing conclusions about the population. To put it simple, just because we know how the employees of one company get to work, we can't say anything about how all employees of a whole country get to work. Making a statement about the whole population, so for example of all working people in a country, is the task of inferential statistics. To describe data descriptively, we now look at the four key components. Measure of central tendency, measure of dispersion, frequency tables and charts. Let's start with the first one. Measures of central tendency are for example mean, median and mode. The arithmetic mean is the sum of all observations divided by the number of observations. Let's look at an example. Imagine we have the test scores of 5 students. 85, 90, 78, 92 and 88. To find the mean score we add up all the scores and divide by the number of scores. So the mean test score of these five students is 86.6. What about the median? When the values in a data set are arranged in ascending order, the median is the middle value. If there is an odd number of data points, the median is simply the middle value. If there is an even number of data points, the median is the average of the two middle values. It is important to note that the median is resistant to extreme values or outliers. Let's look at this example. No matter how tall the last person is, the person in the middle remains the person in the middle, so the median does not change. But if we look at the mean, it does have an effect on how tall the last person is. Let's continue with the mode. The mode refers to the value or the values that appear most frequently in a dataset. A few points to note about the mode. If a dataset has one value that appears more frequently than any other, it has one mode and is called unimodal. For example, in the dataset 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, the mode is 4. If a dataset has two values that appear most frequently, it has two modes and is called bimodal. For instance, in this dataset, the modes are 4 and 5. Of course, a dataset can also have more than two modes. If it has multiple values that appear most frequently, it is termed multimodal. And some datasets might not have any repeating values or the repeating values all have the same frequency. In such cases, the dataset has no mode. Great, let's continue with the measures of dispersion. Measures of dispersion describe how spread out the values in a dataset are. Measures of dispersion are, for example, variance, standard deviation, range and interquartile range. Let's start with the standard deviation. The standard deviation indicates the average distance between each data point and the mean. But slowly, each person has some deviation from the mean. Now we want to know how much the persons deviate from the mean value on average. To calculate the standard deviation, we can use this equation. Sigma is the standard deviation, n is the number of persons, xe is the size of each person and x dash is the mean value of all persons. 
But attention, there are two slightly different equations for the standard deviation. To keep it simple, if our survey doesn't cover the whole population, we always use this equation. Likewise, if we have conducted a clinical study, then we also use this equation to infer the population. But what is the difference between the standard deviation and the variance? As we now know, the standard deviation is the quadratic mean of the distance from the mean. The variance now is the squared standard deviation. If you want to know more about the standard deviation and the variance, please watch our video. Let's go to the range and the interquartile range. It is easy to understand. The range is simply the difference between the minimum and the maximum value. The interquartile range represents the middle 50% of the data. It is the difference between the third quartile Q3 and the first quartile Q1. Therefore, 25% of the values are smaller than the interquartile range and 25% of the values are larger. The interquartile range contains exactly the middle 50% of all values. Before we get to the last point, let's briefly compare measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. Let's say we measure the blood pressure of patients. Measures of central tendency provide a single value that represents the entire dataset, helping to identify a central value around which data points tend to cluster. Measures of dispersion, like the standard deviation, the range and the interquartile range, indicate how spread out the data points are, whether they are closely packed around the center or spread far from it. In summary, while measures of central tendency provide a central point of the dataset, measures of dispersion describe how the dataset is spread around that center. Let's move on to tables. Here we will have a look at the most important ones, contingency tables, also called cross tabs and frequency tables. A frequency table displays how often each distinct value appears in a dataset. Let's have a closer look at this example. Suppose a company surveyed its employees to find out how they travel to work. The options given were car, bicycle, walk and public transport. Here are the results from 30 employees. We can create a frequency table to summarize this data. To do this, we simply enter the four possible answer options in the first column and then count how often car, bicycle, walk and public transport occurred. From the table, it's evident that the most common mode of transport among the employees is by car, with 11 employees preferring it. The least common is bicycle, with five employees using it. This frequency table provides a clear and concise summary of the data, making it easier to understand the transportation preferences of the company's employees. But what if we have a second categorical variable? This is when the contingency table comes in. Imagine the company doesn't have one factory, but two one in Detroit and one in Cleveland. To be honest, I'm not sure how many people in Detroit and Cleveland cycle or walk, but it's just an example. If we want to display both values clearly, we can use a contingency table also called crosstab. The rows of a contingency table represent the categories of one variable, while the columns represent the categories of another variable. Each cell in the table shows the number of observations that fall into the corresponding category combination. For example, the first cell shows that car and Detroit were answered six times. And what about the charts? Let's take a look at the most important ones. To do this, let's simply use DataTab. If you like, you can load this sample dataset with the link in the video description, or you just copy your own data into this table. Here below you can see the variables, distance to work, mode of transport and site. DataDep gives you a hint about the level of measurement, but you can also change it here. Now if we only click on mode of transport, 
we get a frequency table and we can also display the percentage values. If we scroll down, we get a bar chart and a pie chart. Here on the left, we can adjust further settings. For example, we can specify whether we want to display the frequencies or the percentage values or whether the bars should be vertical or horizontal. If we also select Site, we get a cross table here and a grouped bar chart for the diagrams. Here we can specify whether we want the chart to be grouped or stacked. If we click on Distance to Work and Mode of Transport, we get a bar chart where the height of the bars shows the mean values of the individual groups. Here we can also display their dispersion. We also get a histogram, a box plot, a violin plot and a rainbow plot. If you would like to know more about what a box plot, a violin plot and a rainbow plot are, take a look at my videos. I hope you enjoyed the video.